Hello students, in our last module, we discussed about friction being a necessary evil. So today, we are going to begin from where we had concluded our last module. So when we say that friction is a necessary evil, then what do you infer from this statement? It means that there are certain situations in our life which require high friction, while there are some other situations in life which demand minimum or zero friction. For example, consider these situations. Now, if I want to go for mountaineering or trekking during my vacations, then what kind of shoes should I buy? Yes, I will buy shoes having grooves in the sole. And why is it so? That's because they provide better grip on the mountain. Now, what is this thing that we generally call a grip? So, a grip means to grasp tightly or to take and keep a firm hold of the surface. Now, in this situation, these grooved shoes, they help the person to walk safely. And that's because these grooves, they get interlocked with the irregularities present on the mountain surface. Now, you must be guessing, how is this interlocking useful for this person? So, this interlocking, it is useful in a way that it helps the person to firmly hold on to the mountain surface whenever he or she climbs up. Therefore, friction is desired and we need grooved shoes to, to increase the gripping between the shoes and the mountain surface or we can say simply to increase the friction. Okay, so now let's take another example. Here, I am operating a mixer and a grinder for, for a few minutes and after running it for a few minutes, I just touch the surface of the jar. Oh, it's hot. So what do you think? From where did this heat generate? So it's all because of friction which is produced when the moving parts of the machine, they rub together. So what do you think in this situation? Is friction desired here or not? So in this situation, friction is undesirable as it produces heat which is of no good use for us and it causes a lot of wastage of energy and also wear and tear. Therefore, to save energy and prevent wear and tear of machine parts, we somehow have to minimize friction. So energy saved is energy made available for future, right? So let us explore the situations where we require more friction. Now look at these athletes and observe their shoes. Do you find anything special about their shoes? Well, yes, these athletes, they wear special type of shoes that have spikes. And why do you think these athletes, they wear such kind of shoes? Is there any specific reason behind this? Well, yes, athletes, they wear such kind of shoes because these spiked shoes, they provide extraordinary ground grip, which prevents them from slipping while they're running fast. So in this situation, the athletes, they require more friction and that's why they wear these spiked shoes. Now you all have seen various advertisements of tires on your television sets. Let's have a look at this clip. So what do you see in this advertisement? In this advertisement, the emphasis is given on the grooved pattern of the tires. And do you know why is it so? Now that's because these grooved tires, they offer more grip with the ground, thus facilitating safe driving. But then there are certain situations where we have to suddenly stop a speeding car in order to avoid an accident. And this requires a huge amount of frictional force. Now let us see how this is achieved. So the hydraulic system in the automobiles, it multiplies the force on your foot on the brake pedal into enough force to apply the brakes and make the car stop due to very high frictional force produced. Now have a look at the tires of these vehicles and these are known as treaded tires. Have you ever wondered why cars, trucks and bulldozers they have treaded tires? Now it is so because the treaded tires of the cars, trucks and bulldozers they provide better grip with the ground. Now what happens to a tread if you go on a macadamized or a metalled or a soft muddy road? 
Well, if you go on such roads, especially during the rainy season, then these treads, they tend to give you a lot more better grip because they sink into the surface, thereby increasing the friction between the two surfaces in contact. Okay, now we have understood that these treads, they provide us a lot more grip with the ground. But if you're fond of watching car racing games, such as the F1, and if you are a keen observer too, then you must have observed that the tires of these racing cars, they don't have these treads at all. And these tires, which these racing cars have, they are called as slick tires. Now race cars, they move very fast, but yet they do not skid. So as per our knowledge, treaded tires, they offer friction. But then why don't these racing cars have them then? Now that's the question I want you to answer. Just think for a moment and think what could be the logic behind this. Now probably you all would be ready with your answers, so let's discuss. So the answer is that these racing cars, they have slick tires and that's because such slick tires, they provide far more traction or grip than the groove tires on dry roads. And that's due to their greater contact area. Now you would be wondering that why do normal cars, they have treaded tires if slick tires are far much better? Right? Now the main reason is that normal cars, they're designed to be driven in all kinds of conditions, be it the wet condition or be it the dry condition. Now these cars, they have treads to remove the water between the tire and the road, even in the wet conditions. And so they provide more grip. Thus, overall treaded tires, they are beneficial in both wet or dry conditions. And so they are preferred in normal cars for all-round usage. Now next, we will explore the situations where we require less friction. Okay, so today I am in a mood of playing carom board. And here is my carom board and the striker. And now I just strike my striker and I see I could not get my coins into the pockets. And that's because the striker, it is not moving very smoothly as the surfaces of my carom board and the striker, they're very rough. And you've learned in the beginning of this particular module that rougher is the surface, greater is the amount of friction. So now I want to play this game, but I have to find out some way so as to reduce this friction. So what should we do now? Yes, we will have to find out some way so as to reduce the friction between the striker and the carom board surface. And for this, we often make use of the talcum powder. So you see, I'm sprinkling talcum powder over it in order to reduce this undesirable friction. And now let's play the game again. And now, oh, as you see, fortunately, our idea of sprinkling the powder, it has worked. The powder which we had sprinkled has reduced the undesirable friction. And the striker is now moving smoothly. And now you can see, I have my coins in the pockets as well. But then do you know how does this process actually work? What happens to this process? How does it actually occur? Okay. So what happens is when we sprinkle the powder on the carom board, the powder, it occupies places in the minute depressions present on the carom board as well as the striker and coin surfaces. Now coin and board surfaces, they are separated by the powder particles between them. Therefore, the extent of interlocking of irregularities, it is considerably reduced, thus allowing the smoother movement of my striker and the coins on the carom board surface. Fair enough? Okay. So now, the fine particles of the powder, they behave like tiny balls. And coins, instead of moving on the carom board surface now, they move on the top of these tiny rolling balls. You've learned that when two surfaces, they move past each other, it is the irregularities on one surface that comes in contact with the irregularities on the other surface, which causes or produces friction, right? Now the heat generated due to friction, it causes a lot of wastage of energy and wear and tear. 
and to minimize friction we sometimes make use of lubricants now do you know what are lubricants lubricants are the substances which reduce friction and the job of a lubricant is to keep the irregularities apart and prevent them from contacting each other thus lowering or eliminating the metal to metal contact and friction now just take a simple example so here is my room and i am opening its door but the door is not moving smoothly so what do you think could be the possible reason for this well if you closely look at the hinges of the door you will find that the surfaces are rusted so if metallic things they are exposed to atmosphere for a very long period of time then they get rusted due to a chemical reaction and this rusting so caused it increases friction and now the question arises how does this rusting it increases friction so just have a look using magnifying glass at the rusted surfaces of the hinge of the door now what do you find yes there are many irregularities present on the surfaces and these surface irregularities they interlock with each other thus producing friction so what should we do now to minimize this friction okay so we pour a few drops of oil on the hinges of the door and look the door now started moving smoothly so it is beneficial to reduce the friction between the surfaces to make the movement easier and also to reduce the wear and tear on surface and you know it even helps us to save the energy loss which is in the form of heat for the same reason a bicycle and a motor mechanic he also applies grease between the moving parts of the machine so when the oil or grease it is applied between the moving parts of a machine a thin layer is formed between the moving surfaces and it prevents them from directly rubbing against each other thus the interlocking of irregularities is avoided to a great extent now in your day to day life you generally use liquid lubricants such as the oil or the grease but have you ever heard of solid lubricants okay let's discuss about it now so it is observed that a liquid lubricant is not always a best choice for minimizing friction and graphite is used as a solid lubricant which is in the form of dry powder in locks or even dry lubricated bearings since a liquid lubricant it tends to pick up dust and lint easily therefore the contaminants they get stuck in the lock or the bearings and thus they create improper functioning of the lock set so we shall study in the next module now how wheel and ball bearings they help to reduce friction